call the meeting to order. 6.30, yeah. Um, all right. Um, first item is um, citizens' communication. Um, is there any citizens' communication? No? All right. Moving on. Uh, item 3A on the agenda is approval uh, of the minutes. Um, discuss and consider action to approve the Equity Commission regular meeting minutes of January the 8th, 2024. They should be in the... I had reviewed them and had not noticed anything, but can I get a motion to adopt the minutes? A motion. Motion. I need a second. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Minutes approved. Um, item 4A, uh, Brianna Higgins, assistant to the city manager, to discuss and consider possible action regarding the listening sessions. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, you all had a wonderful weekend and month since last time I saw you. Um, so last month, I gave you a very brief oversight on the listening tours. Um, and I, I think from yesterday with the Super Bowl, I will say this has nothing to do with music. I would love to see Usher on a tour, but <laughs> not... It's not the same thing, unfortunately, and I don't think we'll get Usher to Pflugerville. <laughs> but um, last month, I gave you the document. This was a slide from the last presentation. I told you to review the planning document, identify what month you would want to plan, and come back with questions. And this month, I'm taking us all the way back to the beginning again. And we're going to talk through it very slowly. Not very slowly. I do want you to be able to go home tonight. but. Um, go through it in more detail and allow you to really explore the concept. So, this is the same slide as last time, but what I didn't tell you is where did this come from, right? I told you council was interested, council wanted the equity commission to do it, but I didn't really give you that where did the idea come from. We spoke to the city of Plano, oh gosh, maybe two years ago now, a year ago, and they presented to us how they did the listening tour. They called it listening sessions. They went through what that looked like, and then we said, ooh, I like that, and we kind of copied a lot of it. Um, but we also looked at what other entities have done with a kind of listening tour concept. Um, I found some nonprofits have done it with very specified uh, topics, such as uh, substance abuse issues or immigration reform, things like that. And then we found the city of Plano, had done it for your entire city at a very broader scale, and that was really what we were looking for. So we talked to council about it, and council was interested. Then we came to the equity commission. Equity commission was interested. But we hit some road bumps, and it didn't really work out. And then um, council and the equity commission had a co-meeting, and during that meeting, council expressed that they were really interested in the equity commission doing the listening tours. So we went back to the drawing table, and those of you who have been on the commission may have noticed a couple of the pages in the plan look a little bit different, because we wanted to make it easier. Um, some of the road bumps was the actual planning of the meetings. It was a little bit difficult, um, just getting the ball rolling, right? And so that's why some of these pages look different. So the objectives, right, is that community outreach, checking in with our residents, building relationships, hearing their feedback, and evaluating where we are. Um, we all have our own perceptions and biases and viewpoints and um, our stories all look different, right? And so what I might find really important to me, you might not think is important at all, and that's okay. Um, but as a city, we know what we find important based off of the feedback we hear on various projects, um, at different instances, if something happens, I know because I live on Emanuel Road that I'm really hoping that we get moving on our bond project, right? But that's because I drive on that road every day, and if you've never driven on it, you probably have no idea that I really want that road fixed, right? So the idea is that if we check in with our residents and we let them tell us 
what they're doing well and what, what we're doing well as a city and what needs work, then we can kind of figure out what those next steps look like. So in your planning document, um, the first page is an outline of what an actual session would look like, right? So on here it says, getting started, when people walk in, we'll have a demographics um, sheet for them to fill out. This will be anonymous, right? That's personal information. We don't want any names. I don't want your address. I don't want your birthday, your zodiac sign, your favorite color. We just want to collect demographics so that as we go through, we can say, hey, at our first session, we had a lot of really young high school kids, and this is what they said, right? But I don't want any specific information. I don't want to say that um, Jasmine said this and Jasmine is 15 and she goes to Hendrix. I don't want that information. I just want a general idea so we can summarize and, and get a good sense. And then we'll do an introduction. And so the facilitator, which will be one of you, depending on what session it is, will explain the purpose of the listening session, set some ground rules, right? allowing time for others to speak, being respectful of viewpoints, um, and not talking over others. There are some general examples. Um, and then explaining to our participants that action wouldn't happen that night, but that this will inform us on what actions might need to occur. And then you'll go through the questions. And after the questions, you'll wrap up, allow for questions from the participants, um, and then share what those next steps look like future dates, um, when a summary presentation will occur, and when council will see this information. So these are the facilitator questions. These questions we did pull from the city of Plano. Um, obviously it says Pflugerville, not Plano. But we found that those questions were really general. And the reason why they're general is because we want to hear directly from the residents on what they think, right? I don't want to pinpoint an idea in their head of, hey, what do you think about mental health in Pflugerville? Well, some people in Pflugerville may have never thought about it at all, right? They don't have an opinion. They may not want to share that they've never thought about mental health at all. And some people might be really, really passionate about it and overtake the conversation, right? Now all we're talking about is mental health, which is important, but not our goal. So that's why these are so general. And we start light. What do you love about Pflugerville? I'm sure some of you, as you hear this question, are popping up some ideas in your own head. What are some things that you hope don't change? What are some things that are pressing that the community should address? What needs to work better in Pflugerville? What are some things hindering us from working together more effectively? 10 years from now, what would we like our community to be or have that we don't right now? And what words describe your hopes for Pflugerville? The idea is that these are open-ended, and in a group setting, you'll have individuals start sharing. And you might have someone say, hey, I think our parks are doing really great. I think I've shared this example 10 times, I don't know, but I think our parks are doing really great. And someone else on the other side of town might say, woohoo, not my park. What are you talking about? And that, that gives us an idea of what's going on, right? Any questions? Yeah. So as far as, or is that, I don't know if that's later, so just tell me. Um, we're going to pick locations and settings. Are these going to be recorded? Um, how are we, as we ask these questions, how will that content be captured? Yeah. So we're not going to video record them. Um, one, we know that people act different when they know they're on camera, um, whether that's uh, more outspoken or less outspoken. But also, we want everyone to be comfortable to speak freely. How it will be recorded is that a staff member will be in the back writing down and taking notes all of the responses and questions and themes that are occurring. And so there'll be a fly on the wall, it'll most likely be me there taking the notes, sitting in the back making sure I capture everything. We'll probably have one to two staff members taking those notes down. So that way it's um, captured mm -hmm. without also knowing who said what at what point. Okay. So did y'all consider digital recorders? Just the, the voice recordings? Or you feel like people will respond differently if we even do the digital recording. I think so. Um, it's also, if I record it digitally, that's open to an open records request. And so knowing that, I would have to let one, whoever's attending, know that this is being recorded. And so that may also make them uncomfortable just knowing that their voice is captured. Yeah. 
how do we um, encourage co conversation between the participants of the of the listening session? Uh, like, are we going to be sitting in, in more of a like? I guess the format of the room, like, yeah. are, uh, you know, is it going to be more of a roundtable discussion, or are people going to come to a mic and speak, or? I would recommend a roundtable. Okay. Um, that way you can all see each other's faces, yeah. and it's a bit more of an intimate situation. Mm -hmm. um, also recommending time for a pause. If you ask a question and no one answers, that's okay. Just sit uncomfortably yeah. in silence <laughs> until someone, someone will eventually say something. Okay. Any other questions? Those are great questions, by the way. Thank you. So the timeline. Um, this is also in your packet. I just kind of wanted to share where the thoughts and processes come from here. So right now we're February. Next month will be March. Um, you'll plan for your location, your time, and kind of the logistics of, of what date, time, where you'll be. And then in April, we'll all come together as an equity commission and discuss those dates and times and finalize them and fill out this really pretty table on the next page. Um, and then start and staff will get with the comms team to push out all of this information um, on our Facebook, on our social media, the key to the city, everything that we can share information out, we will share information out. And then we will also encourage you to share the information with your friends, your neighbors, if you're on the HOA or the PTA or your wherever you congregate with your fellow Pflugerville friends. Um, and encouraging you to invite two people to each session. So if Corey invites two, Virginia invites two, Katrina invites two, Claudia invites two, maybe four will show up, right? That kind of idea. So how will, what will be the form of the invite? Will we get like a, a flyer or something that we can share? Yeah. Um, so we'll have a flyer? Yeah, we can certainly make a flyer. You could also just, if you're um, at, I don't know, what, what's a, a youth baseball event for some reason, and you're talking with another parent, you could say, hey, guess what? You know, next Saturday at 10, we're going to have this listening tour. You should really come out and share your, share your opinion. Um, but also we'll have a flyer for you as well to... Okay. more formally handed out. And has there been consideration given to using uh, social media um, invites in this process? So we'll have, we'll most likely create like an events page. As the city Facebook account, we won't share, we'll, we'll share it out generally, but we won't directly invite people. Um, but you could on your Facebook be able to invite them. So after May through September occurs and the listening sessions happen in October, staff will summarize those findings, um, take all of the different conversations, aggregate them, all of that fun stuff. And the goal is, although it may not happen, so I wanna set expectations, is that we are able to summarize the findings based on this um, pillar, equity pillars that were created by the first equity commission. Um, they created these pillars of categories that they were interested in, um, that they felt related to equity. And so the goal is that we'll be able to summarize our findings based on these pillars, but I don't know what those findings look like. So I can't promise everything will fit perfectly in a pillar. It may relate to it, but not perfectly align. I don't know. We haven't done this before. So. Well, what if a new theme emerges? then we'll definitely highlight that, yeah. Okay. So I, I, won't, um, I won't put myself in a box where it has to fit in a pillar, but I'm hoping that some will relate to it and we can say, hey, we have this really common theme that relates to mental health, but we may also very well say, hey, whoa, this whole new concept has come up um, and it doesn't fit in these pillars. Yeah? I know you said the questions are purposely broad or generic, right, to not lead down any path mm -hmm. but since we know we have a plan to summarize it by these pillars or anything new that emerges like you just explained would it make sense to set those expectations with them up front or clarify that you know there we have certain pillars and this, this is what they are 
and anything else that emerges will capture as well. But like, I don't know if we want to necessarily not be transparent with some of the pillars that we are, we are looking to use as buckets. Yeah, um, I think that could be helpful if um, we hadn't originally suggested that because we really didn't want to lead any of the framework of people coming into the conversation. Um, you know, sometimes I think the conversation of equity can be really uncomfortable for people because they don't really know what equity looks like or means or um, maybe they've had a bad past conversation with it. And so we didn't want to bring forward those pillars because we didn't want them to limit what their ideas were of Fluberville. Um, saying so, right, if, if I share that these are what our pillars are, going into the conversation, they might have this framework that their opinions need to match that. Does that make sense? At the end of the conversation, you could say, hey, we have these pillars, and we're going to summarize them to fit this matrix, so that you still have that transparency piece. Uh, but if you say it at the beginning of the conversation, that, that might change someone's mindset of how they should view this conversation. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it does. I'm just, I guess, a little bit scratching my head. Like, aren't they also going to just wonder, like, it's the Equity Commission members, yeah. right, that are showing up and asking these questions. So I, I'm just a little, I guess, on the fence with how the value of being more transparent Definitely. up front. But we can iron that out. Yeah. Um, I would take a look at, sorry, this beginning page, the agenda, the outline that that has, and maybe brainstorm where you would want to fit that I accidentally hit a button. Don't look yet. Sorry. Uh, where you might want to fit that conversation, and we can iron that out at the next equity commission meeting of kind of where do we talk about equity commission's role in this? Wouldn't it fit Bill it too? Yeah. Explaining the purpose, and you know, we have some ideas on pillars, but we want your feedback and build on that. Yeah. And each, each of you as a facilitator are going to explain that purpose probably just a little bit different as you see it, right? And so if you want if you want us to create a script for that introduction, we can, and I would recommend kind of drafting what that looks yeah. like. I think we, that's a good idea. Like, I wouldn't want us to be so different in yeah. our introduction. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. could maybe draft some bullet point ideas you have for what that script looks like, and we can bring it forward at the next meeting and, and discuss really what what we want that to sound like. Okay. I have one more. On, yeah. on the questions, you know, and I guess when I think about, you know, community, sometimes it's people mm -hmm. and sometimes it's places, like asking people or asking the community what are some of the places or people that are most important to Pflugerville okay. for people to recognize, you know, like, I know my son went to Weiss, and um, I don't know, I guess they just call him old man Weiss, but he's always at the game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so knowing that the kids, you know, you know, they know that, that, they, that their school is named after someone living. Um, and he supports, you know, he supports the band. He graduated two years ago now. But in either case, um, you know, who are, the, who are the people that are important? And I say that, too, because in a lot of communities, you know, sometimes there are, there are people in the neighborhood that are important. They're core to that neighborhood, and things kind of circle around them. And so um, just knowing the people or even just the places, um, what places are important, I think, are also um, factors, you know, because places are what help preserve community as well. Um, memorable places and why are they memorable are some things um, that I think could be, you know, help, you know, kind of help with the questions because, mm, but I think about people and places. And those could be questions that are added to this list. Uh, so when it comes to 
choosing who we invite and things like that. Um, I know these are pretty generic questions, so um, you know, I know people that have very broad, big interest in, in some subjects, and they can rant about it all day long. Um, like, who in the community should we be targeting to come to these events? I know residents, obviously, but um, any, any more specific um, guidance on that? You know, I, I do leave it very wide open because I do want those really wide open opinions, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would say individuals that are passionate about Pflugerville, right, is probably a good first step. Mm -hmm. uh, individuals that want to see Pflugerville grow and change for the better, another way to look at it. I wouldn't limit it on um, identities or backgrounds or anything like that because we do want that wide range. Now, if you know that you have a friend that might overtake the conversation and you're like, <laughs> yeah. John, don't show up to that, that's your prerogative, right? Okay. But we will leave the door open and okay. have, have as many chairs as we can cool. bring. What about partnering with other organizations? If we know an organization in town that has regular meetings, yeah. is that an option? I would, um, so this kind of got brought up last time as well. The hesitancy with having the event, I do want you to go out into the community, right? The hesitancy of hosting a, a session in partnership with a specific group is that you may then close the door to the rest of Pflugerville, right? Um, so I would just make sure that if that group that you decide to partner with, that they also recognize that other people that aren't in their group are invited to join. So you could say, hey, um, HOA Blackhawk, your community meeting is every first Saturday. How about an hour after your meeting, we do a listening tour, right? And then that way your HOA meet members can join in following it. Um, and they can still do their business ahead of time. But I just want to make sure that we don't close the door to anyone being able to join the conversation. Did that answer your question? It does. I just, you know, naturally, yeah. you know, people have certain networks. Yeah, and definitely. their networks are going to be based upon the communities that they interact with. And I think we're a diverse group, so naturally I know more black people in Pflugerville than, you know, anything. I mean, the local church, um, I think St. Mary's has been here Since a hundred years. Yeah, it's been more than a hundred years. And they were right before you entered Pflugerville, and then they bought this land further down. Mm -hmm. but. You know, honestly, it's a black church. Yeah. I mean, I know Pastor Coxon. Um, that would be someone, you know, can we use your facility Definitely. and have this conversation, but it's open. Yeah. And yes. then, uh, obviously, I would think, then I would go on to say, every, there's so many churches around here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that, you know, yeah, it's like churches almost on every corner and all along Pflugerville Parkway. But each of those are communities of people uh, that would have valuable input in each one. Each congregation is diverse. So, um, and I think that's the value of multiple listening sessions too, because mm -hmm. we can get into s smaller groups. Because I also know, you know, people from pastors and things like that doing food bank stuff. And so, like, that's kind of where my idea is right now of people to invite or facilitate. Volunteer so, people yeah, who are active, active, active volunteers, active, yeah. yeah. Certainly, um, for, yeah. Yeah, food pantries mostly. I Definitely. Know. And if you know someone that has a facility that they could let you utilize, that is the goal. Um, I think what more so where I was trying to say is we don't want the listening sessions to have, um, like, a topic associated, right? Mm -hmm. It's opening, we're yeah. just here to listen. In the past, some of the conversations started to lead themselves to this is only a conversation about um, pride in Pflugerville, right? And yep. that's what we wanted to stay away from was letting it be open and not so. But if, but if the you, demographics will allow you to slice that. Exactly. So, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if it, yeah. And will we see the notes immediately after the meeting to make sure or is it going to wait till the final report? 
uh, the final report, but if at the meeting you picked up on some themes or you, comments that you constantly heard that you want to make sure are recorded, you can send those over. Um, I don't want to promise you'll get those notes right after because it might take a minute to make them look pre pretty. Um, I don't know if I'll type them or write them out yet, and my handwriting is, I'm left-handed and Me too. we don't have pretty handwriting. <laughs> nope. So. <laughs> Any other questions? I have another question. <laughs> sort, of along, <laughs> sort of along those lines, and I think I had brought this up in previous iterations of this discussion. Um, language. Mm -hmm. So, Espanol, Spanish. Like, I'm bilingual. I would be happy to host one in Spanish. Is that uh, doable, one? And, I mean, the capturing the responses I don't know if you're bilingual, but that's another consideration that would need to be yeah. um, set up, right? I'm not bilingual. Um, I did get a minor in Spanish, but my husband well, was terrible. Um, so we are open to, to that. I would just need to know what session you would definitely intend on it being bilingual so that I can make sure that I have one of our bilingual staff members there with me to record those notes. Um, we also follow ADA rules as well, so if someone needs an interpreter um, or other assistance for a listening tour, we, we post kind of a, a statement. You'll see it on the bottom of your agenda as well, where it's, if you need this, please reach out. They'll reach out to me on our ADA coordinator for those types of things. And so we'll ensure that it's inclusive. If you want to have a session that is aimed towards our bilingual community, um, certainly, we'll just make sure that we have the staff there to help, um, and as well as a staff member to help uh, interpret with you if you feel like you need that as well. Great. Yeah, and I guess along those lines, I guess I wonder, are there populations here who are not, you know, you know, English is not even their second language, whether they be Asian, like, you know, there's a large... Mm -hmm kind of Chinese population. Yeah. Vietnamese is the third most spoken language. The Vietnamese? I believe there's 98 yeah, we have languages spoken in the school district. Mm -hmm. so. so how do we, you know? So I would I would say for this first iteration of the, we've never done this before, right? This listening tour. So I do, I love the idea of a bilingual session. Um, because we have 98 spoken languages, I don't think it would be possible for us to have a <laughs> listening tour for each of our languages. But what about right? the Vietnamese? And, and, and even there in my job, I know for doing the child care case system, we're, we're having to publish, uh, create our online system and applications. I'm glad you brought that up. We have to do English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. That's how big the Vietnamese population is in we, the state. We do have Vietnamese. So we, I, I just think we need to go ahead and put that out there because if they can't, I mean, I don't know how we would get up because I don't speak Vietnamese, but <laughs> I, that, I mean, that's kind of one of those issues when, when mm -hmm. people can't speak the language, right. they, their, their voice doesn't come out in things like this. So mm -hmm. um, maybe for the bilingual sessions, and I'm just throwing it out there, we make that round two because it would give us more time to get people who spoke the, the like three or four most popular languages <clears throat> to help out with that. Um, I think it's, I'd have to look up the fourth, I think it might be Korean. That sounds right, but I'm not confident. Um, those are great concerns to bring up. I know we had talked about like Jennifer said, my concern is the timing of it. I'm not confident we'll be able to get our Vietnamese staff members and interpreters in general, because I don't know exactly how many Vietnamese staff members we have that can speak the language um, prepared in time for that. Um, I like the idea of around two having a bilingual session, right, if we see the great success of this. Uh, and it was talked about last board about an online questionnaire and so maybe towards the end of this, we can put out an online questionnaire that's in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. And that can give the opportunity for those who couldn't join us for our listening tour, still provide their feedback um, in, a, in a different way. 
has that to come. And yeah, we, I just don't want the. I just don't think we would be doing the best service if we muffled mm -hmm. those voices because mm -hmm. they're not English speakers. You know. Mm -hmm. So we I think that's wanna, a great point. We maybe could find a partner in that, um, someone who speaks the language naturally and things like that. That could facilitate, you know, some of that discussion, but also someone to take notes and things like that. So, because. Um, I would feel I, I don't speak Vietnamese, so, yeah. um, uh, but I really want to you know hear from those folks um, uh, and then get it translated into something I can understand as well. So maybe there's a partnership, something we could do with a local church or something. I was just letting you sit in silence for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if there was anything else to come up. Certainly. Um, I'll take that and see what, what we can do with it. Okay, so timeline, staff summarizes um, findings. And within that time frame, I would anticipate we provide the equity commission. It's not written in the timeline, but I anticipate that we then should present those findings to you as an equity commission prior to showing them to city council so that you're not like, here's our findings. Oh, we learned that? I didn't know, right? So we'll, we'll present those findings to you first and then we'll present them to council. Um, the goal is that there will then be actionable steps and that's one of your last pages is, um, it's on the back of the matrix, action steps. So we summarize our findings, we, we find those common themes um, and then we might be able to identify some action steps, right? A lot of people said they love our parks, but they don't love the basketball courts. Then we know action steps, council should prioritize funding for new basketball courts in the FY25 budget, right? Uh, that, that's kind of the hope is that we'll get feedback that can then turn into some action steps. And it might even turn into some action steps for the equity commission, right? We might see, and we're just talking about language, um, maybe you know, Equity Commission identifies ways to um, further hear voices of our bilingual residents, right? Things like that. Again, I don't know what those action steps look like, um, but the goal is that we'll, we'll find some. So, the listening tour dates. There's this pretty, should have kept a staple version. Uh, there's this pretty table. It is completely blank. Uh, there's no one's name in it. There's not a date. There's not a time, a month, a okay, Nothing is in there. Um, that was the goal for today, for us to at least identify what you will be responsible for. Um, so the gray boxes are just intended for names. Uh, there would be two sessions per month. If you, Claudia, you might say, I want to do September and... There used to be five members of the commission. <laughs> Apparently there's four. So it will be um, three sessions right now for you to work on. But if we get a fourth or a fifth, sorry, person, you might be able to split that with them if they come in time. Um, but for now, since there's four of you and I hope you're staying, um, we'll do three sessions, right? So Claudia, you could say, I want to do all of the sessions in September and one session in August. Or you might say, I want to do one in June, one in July, and one in September, right? And then that's what's decided tonight. From there, Corey, you would decide, okay, I have May. I'm going to do one session on May 5th at 2 p.m. at my local Catholic church. And then I'm going to do one session on a Saturday at night. No, not at I don't recommend that for anybody. Um, 6 p.m. Uh, at my HOA, right? And then you would, at the next meeting in April, when we finalize all of this, provide point of contact and all of that. I would suggest as you finalize things, you email them to Jennifer and myself, and I can just start filling out the table ahead of time. Um, so then in April, I can show a pretty filled out table, but if you won't know until that date, um, any questions on that? Does it make sense? So there are, um, on the bottom, some guides for the meeting. 
just to keep in mind as you're trying to plan it out, you know, we want to make sure that our meetings are spread out throughout the community. Um, HOAs sometimes have great spaces, may not necessarily be at their meeting, but um, in their space or after their meeting, before their meeting. And we do have contacts for all of the HOAs, most of the HOAs. I'm not gonna say, I'm not, I can't promise all, most of the HOAs. Um, because our staff attends those meetings. So if there is an HOA you have in mind, let me know and I can get you that contact information. Um, and then considering the residents that would attend, think about parents, think about uh, single individuals, individuals without children, retirees, students, families in general, whatever that family might look like, um, as you consider a time, right? Um, and then location should fit approximately 25 people. Um, this is the first time we've done this, so we really don't know how many people will attend, but based on all of our past community engagement experiences, 25 seems like the appropriate number, unless it's an issue that like everyone's really riled up about. Um, but 25 has been a good average number um, to fit. Any questions? I remember reading that Pflugerville is a, what, a majority, minority community? Mm -hmm. um, so that means we have some basic demographics. How are we ensuring that we hit those, those specific groups from that minority listing report? I think single mothers was one, seniors was another group. Uh, veterans, um, that's what I'm remembering off of the top of my head from that article. I would suggest, you know, as you mentioned earlier, everyone has different contacts, right? You may have contacts with different groups, advertising with those groups, asking those groups to share out that these listening tours are happening. Unfortunately, we can't ensure definitely that we're going to represent every single group or all of those different voices simply because, um, you know, we hope that they hear it, but if they hear it, they may just not want to come, right? Um, I think part of the challenge of this will be getting people to show up because this has never happened before, right? Um, the goal is, one, that we show the community we have an equity commission because we have heard from past commissioners who feel like individuals don't even know that equity commission exists, right? So that's part of the goal is to, you know, show, hey, equity commission is here. We want to hear your voice. Um, I think if we find in our findings after all of this that we were missing voices, that's a way for us to identify how we can do better moving forward. Um, is it because they didn't know it was happening or is it because they knew it was happening and they didn't come because they didn't feel like they'd be listened to or heard or their opinion didn't matter, right? We don't know necessarily why they didn't come. Um, and that, that could be a step two to this. I think step one is seeing who shows up and who are we missing and then how do we get them moving forward. So our to-do between now and let's say the next meeting to make progress is to identify how many dates each? So your to-do today is to figure out what date, what month, what month, how many date, like, there's two spots in June, two spots in July. Those, just saying, I want to do a meeting in June, a meeting in July. Next meeting in March, we'll discuss, I, I mentioned we'd come back with some of those uh, script stuff, um, but we won't discuss the meeting dates. It'll just be discussing the script. April will come forward, and that's when we'll have our finalized list. Does that make sense? So today's just saying, I want to plan for June. I don't need a date or a time or a location today. I just need to know what you are saying that you'll be responsible for. June, August, September, one each. <laughs> I'll take a May. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're going to jump in, I'll jump in. <laughs> Bring a pen with you to take notes. Okay, Corey will take a May. Are you going to do all of May or just one day of May? Uh, 
all of me. Okay. I'll just do two. Okay. Right. So we got three each? Yes. I guess I do. Oh gosh, this is tough. <laughs> I'm thinking June, July, August. June, July, August. In Virginia, you said? June, August, September. June, August, September. I'll just fill in the gaps. <laughs> Where are the gaps? Uh, yeah. I'll take a September if I need one more. My, my two mates. Claudia. Claudia. Okay, I'm going to read these out loud to make sure that I have it confirmed correctly. For May, I have Corey and Corey. For June, I have Virginia and Claudia. For July, I have Claudia and Katrina. For August, I have Claudia. Virginia and Claudia. Sorry. I wrote in the wrong box. So for August, I have Virginia and Claudia, and then for September, I have Virginia and Katrina. Sound good? Now, can we double up on any of them? Does it have to be one facilitator at each one, or can we just... So if you wanted a part, so like, let's right, say, right. Um, for one meeting in August, it was Claudia and Katrina facilitating, that's okay. I would limit it to two facilitators, though. Um, one, to avoid quorum of the commission, mm -hmm. but two, uh, that way the speakers don't feel overwhelmed with how many people are facilitating. I feel like to have a more natural flow of conversation, if you have like somebody with different, maybe they heard something in the conversation that, let's say I didn't hear, and yeah. maybe they can move the conversation along a little better. It would help to have another person there. Um, just my opinion. Turn. Okay, so I think what we can do for now is um, I have everyone's names. I'm gonna put it in a pretty in the pretty sheet for you, Jennifer, so that mm -hmm. everyone can have the pretty version and not see my scratch handwriting. Terrible. Um, and then between. Today in April, you'll work on location, time, and date. It's probably easiest to find a location first and then figure out the time and date, right? Um, and share that information with us as you go along. And then I think in April, once we come back with those finalized dates, we can have a conversation about, um, hey, I planned May. I'd like someone to join me. Will one of you be a facilitator with me, right? We can have that conversation then in April. And that might be easier for you to decide if you are able to join another session or not um, to co-facilitate with someone. Um, so, preparing for April. Keep, keep looking at this pretty document. Um, think about more questions as you have them. Work on your location, date, and times you selected for the month that you selected, um, and prepare to invite your neighbors to and the community to listening sessions. Um, also think about, it's not on here because we just discussed it, the script, kind of what you want that introduction to look like. And in the next meeting, I can come forward and we can discuss um, that as a group here, unless you really want to talk about it now, but I think you might want some time to let it flow. Um, and to Virginia's comment about the questions, I can also at that meeting, I'll bring forward those two additional questions to see if that's something that you want to include or not. Um, but once you see in that full list, it might help your brain visualize it. That is everything, any questions? I have one other question. As far as location, just because you said HOA, like I know, my HOA has a space, but they can charge for it, but how does that work? Like, are we looking for free space, or like the city would pay for any cost associated with space, or how do we handle space? 
I would encourage it to be free. Uh, <laughs> always is yeah. the goal. Um, usually our HOAs will work with the city, so if your HOA is like, mm, no, let us know. I can talk with them to see if, if they'll work with us. Um, currently, I don't have a budget to be able to charge out of, um, to my knowledge. Jennifer, I don't think they have Yeah. So I'd have to talk with staff just to see um, that that hadn't come up in our conversation. So I'm not entirely, it's so not a definite no, mm -hmm. but. But the objective is free space. Yes. And do you know of any, um, you mentioned you had a registry of the HOAs. Do you have a registry of like any veteran organizations? American Legion. Yeah, we have the, I've got the content. We have our local American Legion um, contact and that's where a lot of our veterans yeah. are. I think we also have a lot of veterans at, uh, that just happen to be a part of the Lions Club as well. Because mm -hmm. in my mind I'm thinking of course, African Americans, veterans, and seniors mm -hmm. are groups, you know, or people that I know I would try to. Mm -hmm. Can we use the, utilize the library as a location for space? Or would you prefer somewhere okay. else? I think you would do one session at the library. Um, because I know finding those locations will be difficult, but I would limit it to just, out of all of the equity sessions, just one at the library. Um, I do think the library is a great central hub where a lot of people come here and they know where it is. But well, quickly, though, because we, we fill up fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I do encourage out in the community as well. Any other questions? These are really great, thoughtful questions. Um, I can tell that y'all seem excited about it. That could just be me projecting, but um, I'm excited for this to move forward. If y'all have questions in the meantime, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I will make sure that we get those contacts to y'all as well. Um, I'll get the HOA list to you, Jennifer, so that okay. you have it. Um, so I did have an extra question. So um, you were mentioning, so we don't have a quorum. Um, so, you know, I, I would like to be at some of the sessions, but uh, I don't want to like create conflict with the quorum and open meetings act and all that stuff. So what, what is your thoughts on like, I, I guess, will there be a, uh, the notes kind of handed out afterwards after those sessions and like, just how, how would I be informed of what happened in the session if I'm absent? We could provide a summary. Um, I mentioned earlier, I, I can't promise I'll get them to you like right oh, yeah, away. Um, I want to make sure I set clear expectations, right? Um, but if you do attend a session, make sure there's not a forum of the Equity Commission, but also making sure that you're in the back um, where individuals don't feel, one, that you're supposed to be part of the conversation, okay. right? But also, um, uncomfortable at the same time, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I just didn't want to miss out. Or yeah, like. definitely. So I'll, I, I'm hearing clearly that you want notes after, so I will <laughs> just make a note that we will send uh, the equity commission notes after. Yeah, after I think I got right back to notes, sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> so we can't attend just as a resident in the back and not you know, if if we're if there's two facilitators and some, we just want to be there to hear and just understand the conversations that are going on. Would that still be quorum? If we're not facilitating, if we're just in the back. If you're not providing input, that's not a quorum. You okay. can so, for example, at a council meeting, mm -hmm. if all four of you wanted to show up to tomorrow's council meeting as residents to listen, mm -hmm. um, you can do so. That is completely your right as a resident. Um, we encourage you not to all four sit together because then that just visually looks like I have a quorum of the Equity Commission mm -hmm. together. Um, and you could be talking about what you ate for dinner last night, but the public might think you're not, right? So I would recommend for perception wise, if you do attend an Equity Commission meeting, or not Equity Commission meeting, <laughs> please attend these, uh, a listening <laughs> forum, um, that it just doesn't appear to be a forum. Okay, so the answer is you can. Yes, just. Sorry. Yeah, just. Yeah. <laughs> Those are 
a very long winded answer. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Any okay, that concludes my presentation. Thank you. All right. Uh, next on the agenda for B uh, was actually an item I added to discuss and consider possible action regarding encouraging civic engagement. And uh, my thought here was um, whether the committee would be interested in brainstorming some ideas and recommendations that we could propose um, to city council around civic engagement and as an example not it doesn't have to be the recommendation or even part of whatever we formulate but um, one that I thought might be low-hanging fruit would be for the city to um, be more deliberate or intentional I guess is a better word for um, including for example like voter registration tables at city events as an example um, I'm sure there's other more creative ideas that we could come up with collectively, but that was one. I think that's an essential one. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, part of what you see with the groups we're trying to represent here is they don't know the importance of voting. Mm -hmm. um, and don't even know, I mean, some people don't even realize, you know, they can check the box on the driver's license to register to vote. Mm -hmm. And then people don't vote in the small elections. I think that's. Mm -hmm. I think that's excellent. I think. I think also a good idea would be like figuring out ways to get the community involved in like donations and things like that. Um, having donation boxes at uh, city facilities, um, maybe doing you know a community effort to in the winter and the summer to get people clothing and shelter and all that stuff that they need the necessities. So that would be interesting. All right. So the idea, my thought was we weren't going to actually have final recommendations tonight, oh, yeah. but more bring the idea. And if there's support, which I'm hearing some, mm -hmm. um, then we, we could um, document mm -hmm. these recommendations. And I guess we would we would what, draft a resolution or put together a summary for the city um, council? It, it, yes, it's my understanding that um, that would be at towards the end of the year um, what, as sort of a final report, but the listening sessions, the feedback you get from that also, I think is going to be part of all of that. So it would be part of our report at the end of the year? Um, the listening sessions, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, or to make rec recommendations based on what people have told told you that we needed here in Clickerville. Right. So this so. is a this is a separate sort yeah. of recommendation. Yeah. I think all the recommendations though would happen at the end of the year rather than throughout the year. So we would have an equity we would have a listening to a report mm -hmm. and then we would keep this as For an agenda item. Yeah. And come up with our civic engagement recommendations. So we would end up with two reports? Is that what we're saying? I don't know that, I'm not explaining it well at all, Brianna. Um, I, I'm not sure that it would be two reports necessarily. It's, it would be, here are our recommendations, here are the recommendations that we made based on the li listening sessions, and then here are additional recommendations that the Equity Commission. Oh, I see, so the equity. Um, I had it, um, I'm not sure about outside of the listening tour. Mm -hmm. I hadn't discussed that with staff on what that would look like. That's, it seems like a great idea to provide all of your recommendations at one point um, as a report. Like if you do a report along with the listening tour, that might provide like a cohesive alignment. Um, but I, I don't, outside of the listening tour, that hadn't been part of our conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how would, like if we have things we want to do during the year, do we have to wait all year to get it done? I'm going to have to get clarification on it. Um, okay. I'm not sure. But let me find out okay. and um, get back with you guys. And it would be the same for that. Um, so let's see, recommendations. Yeah, I mean, my hope would be that we could 
before Move next this. year. Yeah, that, yeah. Well, that we that we could move on recommendations to for consideration. Yeah. Um, you know, not necessarily tied to the yeah. listening. Because we're still in the council, and I would like the council to be productive throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, I think that's been part of the criticism, right? Mm -hmm. Is like not seeing tangible <laughs> results. So that, that that's why I thought, yeah. well, here's one we could push mm -hmm. forward in in parallel to executing on the listening. Yeah, yeah. let me um, get clarification on that. If I if I try to do it, it's just going to be muddied up in a mess. So yeah, we'll ask them. All right. Mm -hmm. And so this will be a agenda item next meeting as well. I can put it on the agenda. Yeah. Great. Do we need to take any other action with respect to four B, or that's um, pending whatever clarification? Yeah, there's no action to be yeah. taken right now. Okay. Other than me. Awesome. All right. Um, do I need to ask for a motion to adjourn? You can just adjourn. Okay. Um, it is 726, and the meeting's adjourned. Meeting's adjourned.